Hello, dear participants. As an interpreter, I'm speaking on behalf of Dr. Alex Sorokin, PhD, and Executive Director of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia. I welcome you at the final lecture dedicated to the issues of matching of constitution types in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. Today's lecture is dedicated to the accumulation of heat and dampness syndrome according to traditional Chinese medicine or Pitta Kapha Vikriti state according to Ayurveda. And it means that the state of Pitta Kapha Vikriti is pathological. Traditionally, we go through some basic notions, and constitution is a complex of stable, structural, anatomic, physiological, adaptive, and psychological features of the person which had been formed under the influence of the innate and acquired factors. The VEDAPULSE device that we have designed for you helps to identify physical characteristics of constitution. Why is it important to know the constitution type of the patient? Each type of constitution has its own weak points. Peculiarities of the constitution type form a tendency to certain pathogenic processes and diseases in the body. Correction of the constitution features allows to prevent development of the disease. Knowing predispositions to diseases, the specialist can perform a preventive treatment, which is a highest level of art of healing. Traditionally, we have three basic constitution types presented by three regulation systems or three doshas vata, pitta and kapha but also doshas can be combined with each other in different ways vata, pitta and kapha form nine subtypes and the tenth type is an ideal combination or balance of doshas today we are going to talk about pitta kapha type which greatly differs from pitta vata type or kapha pitta type as the very combination and domination of certain prime elements form the constitution and its uniqueness the key information is contained in the parity chart or correspondence chart that shows how traditional uh, the symptoms of traditional chinese medicine correlate with ayurveda Let's remember all the syndromes we have discussed without, uh, within this course and also the predispositions of each of the state. So, Vata type or low ojas type corresponds to emptiness of yin in traditional Chinese medicine and it predisposes the person to immune deficiency, frequent catheteral diseases, meteo sensitivity and vascular weakness leading to tachycardia. Vata pitta type that we have associated with empty blood syndrome predisposes to two main disorders. The first one is anemia due to imbalance of Ranjaka pitta and the second is uh, infertility. Emptiness of yin, uh, I'm sorry, emptiness of yang also predisposes to infertility but firstly it develops a tendency to digestive disorders due to extremely low agni which also causes renishes and bronchial asthma syndrome of axis of young threatens uh, with hypertension and pranjaka imbalance manifesting through skin diseases Emptiness of yin syndrome or pitta vata constitution we discussed through, through the notion of avalambaka kapha and the mechanism of water salt metabolism. We said that emptiness of yin disturbs the spirit which causes insomnia. Imbalance of, of avalambaka leads to drying out of the mucus, chronic uh, tonsillitis and early wasting of the body. The previous lecture was dedicated to the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome. We talked about problems connected with high cholesterol and excessive body weight and also viewed various schemes of caloric estimation for the daily ration. And the next uh, syndrome is Kaphavata type. Uh, it was associated with stagnation of key energy in traditional Chinese medicine. We pointed out that this state is dangerous as it predisposes to development of lumps or tumors or a development of neoplasms in the body. And today we are talking about accumulation of heat and dampness, which first of all is dangerous for two organs, the liver and the spleen. Here, Anjakapita suffers the most and it starts the complex of imbalances manifesting rather clearly. So what is accumulation of heat and dampness or Pitta Vata Vikriti? It is a complex of constitutional features developing as a result of prolonged stagnation of key energy, retention of fluids, 
accumulation of pathological dampness and, dampness and violation of metabolism or presence of heat. So let's turn to the clinical case. The patient, even if it is a young woman, uh, well dressed up, uh, and she's of 27 and or 28 years old would have greasy face and oily hair and you would notice it, this she would complain that usually when she wakes up in the morning she has to remove yellowish turbid and sticky secretion from the corners of her eyes but it would not be the main problem of course the main problem is quite intimate as she is suffering from excessive sweating and periodical rashes in the genital area it would be obvious that the woman takes care of herself and doesn't have any problems with hygiene, as one might think, considering the nature of problems she has. So you would ask her if she experiences painful sensation in the right subcostal area in, uh, after heavy meals. And after pressing on the area, you would notice that the woman feels uncomfortable or, and probably feels pain. The next important thing is to find out if there were any female members in the family of the patient suffering from gallstone disorder. And it is a great chance that the patient would say that there actually were. So we would come to the conclusion that uh, it is an individual constitution of the person associated with the excess of dampness and heat that manifests through redness and rashes and oiliness and greasiness of her face. A simple herbal therapy is, for example, an intake of herbal tea during a month would make her skin much clearer and she would not find any yellow secretion in the corner of her, eye, of her eyes anymore. But the most important thing about the therapy in this case is that thus you would prevent the development of a more serious problem with this constitution type, which is a gallstone disease. Here you can see two hieroglyphs, Chinese hieroglyph of dampness and heat. Uh, dampness is a pathological product which is a diffuse accumulation of water in the human body in the cellular, cellular and intercellular space and it is also very closely connected with violation of fat metabolism as you remember we were talking about that in the previous lectures. Heat in this constitution type is present as a pathological condition characterized by a high level of basic metabolism, thermogenesis, and metabolic dis distortions. It belongs to the category of young and characterized by rising up. So let's now talk about Pitta Kapha Vikriti and its main features and also following symptoms and general features of the body. The main features would be greasy face, oily, shiny and red nose, acne, but not the ones that are typical for pure pita type, but the unformed, unripen acne, looking as the, if they are not uh, ripen and as if they are smeared on the face. Also, you would notice seborrhea, a sense of bitterness in the, mouth, in the mouth, a feeling of heaviness in the epigastric region on the right after heavy meals. The following symptoms would be dry mouth, uh, not followed by dry, dryness in the gastrointestinal tract, by the way. On the contrary, stools would be sticky and smearing, which proves violated fat metabolism. Also, you would notice restlessness, redness of the eyes, profuse dis discharge from the eyes, excessive sweating, especially the upper part of the torso and head. Sweats uh, thick and sticky uh, with a strong odor. The stool is oily and sticky. The urine is of a dark color. General features of the body would be reduced tolerance to dampness and heat. Uh, poor health in hot and humid weather. A tendency to overweight, a tendency to alcoholism. Psycho-emotional features would be irritability and anger. Uh, language diagnosis would show red tongue with a greasy yellowish coating. And pulse diagnosis would show frequent and slippery pulse. Combination of the prime elements in Pitta Kapha Vikriti and accumulation of heat and dampness syndrome. Pitta is formed by combination of Jala and Agni, with Agni dominating, and you can see it here. 
And Kap Kapha constitution is formed by Prithvi and Jala, and here Jala is dominating. So water is dominating in, in Kapha. Thus, in Pita Kapha constitution, we get an interesting combination. Pita already has a lot of water, and water of Kapha adds up to, to it, which forms a tendency to bestow's body complexion. And all this is accompanied by fire, or pita, that gives the heat. So, as a result, we get all the dampness and heat. Nidana tab of Vedapos would show that uh, fire, Agni, and water, Jala, are dominating. One of the most important indicators here would be low value. In, uh, in any case, when you see low value in Pancha Mahabhut, it is a pronounced sign of stagnation of key energy that starts many pathological conditions, so you need to pay special attention to this indicator. All the other putas here are subdominant. Sanskrit notion of pitta. According to Ashtanga Hridaya, pitta has several outstanding characteristics. First of all, it is hot. Due to increased thermogenesis and general metabolism in the body. Pitta is light, which means that this regulation system usually quickly gets involved in the mechanisms of regulation, first of all, in the level of systematic endocrine hormones that are secreted by large endocrine glands. The next feature, Pitta is oily. This regulation system is involved in the metabolism of fats through controlling the secretion of, on the level of small intestine and pancreas and through the process of utilization of fats uh, on the level of tissues. Pitta is tense. It stimulates processes and gets tense all the time. It is fluid. It's mobile. It involves adjacent tissues in the processes through uh, paracrine activity. It has foul smell as it produces toxic metabolites excessively. Tox toxic metabolize metabolites are inferred through the skin with disruption of the skin flora, causing dysbiosis and other problems associated with Parajaka Pitta. And also Pitta is sharp and clear, which is connected with Pachaka and Sadhaka Pitta. And now Sanskrit notion of Kapha. Kapha is moisty or oily. In traditional Chinese medicine, it is usually said that Kapha is moisty. And in Ayurveda, we more often say that it is oily. Kapha participates in the metabolism of fats through the pancreas secretion. Involved in the control of internal environment of the body through the diuresis system, Kapha controls water salt metabolism through Avalambaka Kapha, but not being on charge of output of salts as Pitta Dosha, but through the output of water. It is cold due to low metabolism, it is heavy due to slow inert inclusion of systemic mechanisms of regulation. It is viscous as it gets condensed too fast with the presence of all the pathological fluid. Kapha is turbid, which is caused, first of all, by violation of cholesterol metabolism. And it is dense, uh, as classically the presence of Kapha leads to stagnation, formation of neoplasms, violation of key circulation. The causes of accumulation of heat and dampness. First of all, innate accumulation of heat and, damp in, uh, and dampness is taken into consideration. According to traditional Chinese medicine, it is weak health of the parents, and Ayurveda has um, the opinion that it is karmic factors that are responsible for realization of this state in Kapha Prakriti, um, Pitta Kapha Prakriti. Also, one of the causes might be climatic factors, as living in a tropical or subtropical humid and hot climate, or long stay in at a hot and humid places can lead to the development of the syndrome. One of the main uh, causes may be lack of physical activity and idle lifestyle, especially after 40. The next reason, uh, the next possible reason is irrational nutrition, uh, excessive consu consumption of fat and sweet food, alcohol abuse, energy stagnation uh, that eventually leads to stagnation of fluids and formation of heat. Diseases of, diseases of constitutional accumulation of heat and dampness are 
um, prolonged accumulation of heat and dampness leads to thickening of fluids, crystallization and deposition of salts, pigments, cholesterol, inflammation and the formation of concrements. If heat and dampness accumulates uh, in liver and gallbladder, we get chronic non-calculus um, cholecystitis. If heat and dampness accumulate in the liver and gallbladder, we also can uh, get gallstone disease. If heat and dampness accumulate in kidneys and bladder, the person would suffer from urolithiasis. If heat and dampness accumulate in large intestine, the person gets hemorrhoids. And cardiointervalogram indicators of accumulation of heat and dampness. Spectrum cardiointervalogram equivalence of the accumulation of heat and dampness. Uh, first of all, total power of the spectrum is in the range of more than 3000 milliseconds squared. Low frequency, uh, not less than 45%, which tells us about the large quantity of fire due to pitta dosha. Uh, and uh, high frequency is 20 to 40 percent of the spectrum. Very low frequency is in a range about 15 percent. And uh, spectrum cardiointervalogram indicators of this constitution type tell us that there is a substantial, substantial amount of energy in the person. But due to the stagnation tendencies, due to kapha. The, uh, the person gets all the inertia and uh, the person is not able to mobilize all the sources that he has. Indices of the time analysis and accumulation of heat, heat and dampness. An average duration of cardiac cycle is above uh, 950 milliseconds, which is a bit lower than in pure Kapha type. Tension index, as a, as a rule, is below 60 conventional units, which shows tendency to vegetonia. Another important marker is that variation range of this type is the biggest in comparison to other constitution types. For example, the variation, uh, variation range of pure Vata type is 30 or 50 milliseconds, and for Pitta Kapha type it is 250 milliseconds. Restoration index is above 4 conventional units presenting inert character of restoration mechanism. Yin Yang index is in the range of the lower border of norm of 100 conventional units, which shows the tendency to tension in the channels connected with Ida Nadi, which shows axis of Yin. Adequacy index tends to 31, which reflects high demands and inert capacity. Integral indices in the accumulation of heat and dampness syndrome. Most of the people of this type would be in the range of an average morphofunctional state. Stress tension is in a lower border of the green zone. Adaptation price is rather high. They have a pretty rich stock of resources, though it cannot be put into action due to Kapha tendencies. They cannot mobilize the resources that fast. Um, they cannot mobilize the resources that fast, which manifesting through inertia. At the same time, the demands are high, uh, as pita or fire tends to spend energy non-stop. Pulse characteristics in the accumulation of heat and dampness syndrome. According to three-point scale by Vasant Lad, Pitta would be around three, three and a half, Kapha about two points, and Vata not more than one point. By the Veda Pulse program, Pitta is uh, more than is more than four and tends to five. Kapha is somewhere near Pitta. It is slightly subdominant, uh, though it tries to reach Pitta, and Vata would be around one point. We can see here the features of Manduka Gati, which is typical for Pitta Dosha. We can see it through the high waves jumping as a frog. But on the background of Manduka Gati, there would be also classical Hamsa Gati or Swan Gati, manifesting through serration of the waves. Vega is about 60, but below 68. Tala, the pulse is elastic, but having an average amplitude rhythm. Bala, uh, it is a very strong pulse, typical for Pitta Vikriti. In Tapamana, we would see Tikshna Agni, if Pitta is more than 5 points, but usually Kapha drags Pitta down, and as a result we get Sama Agni. Here you can see three intervalograms to compare. 
The first one is of a pure pita type, and Mandukagati is clearly seen here. Cloud of dots of this type in scatterogram is located in the center of the scatterogram, and it has a wide oval form reminding a cigar. The second intervalogram is of a person of pure kappa constitution. Here we can see the classical hamsagati or swan pulse. You can see that it less uh, it is of a less amplitude than the previous one. It has more it is more even and it is in the range higher than one thousand milliseconds. The combination of these two intervalograms of these two types of pulses give give us the picture that we see in pita kappa constitution. As for the scatterogram, uh, we said that for pita constitution the cloud is in the center. For kapha, as you can see in the picture, const uh, the, the cloud shifts to the right upper corner, but still is pretty condensed. In case of pita kapha constitution, we see that the cloud has also shifted to the right upper corner, but looks more scattered or smeared in comparison to previous scatterograms, as you see. One of the most significant signs of the scatterogram is that it looks as a comet and it has this tail which a comet usually has. Bioenergy in the accumulation of heat and dampness syndrome. Total level is below 80%. Tension is above 10% or decreased towards 1% in the organs of the maximum involvement, involvement in the pathophysiology of the syndrome. Subdoshes in the syndrome of accumulation of heat and dampness, Ranjakapita tends to increase, and Ranjakapita is associated with the hepatobiliary system. It is also followed by imbalance of Avalambaka and Kledaka Kapha, and one of the significant signs again is lack of Yanavata, showing a tendency to stagnation. Dhatu in this syndrome of accumulation of heat and dampness, uh, dampness you would find tension of Raktadhatu. People of Pitokapha type often suffer from chronic inflammatory diseases due to the presence of toxins in the blood. And the ways of harmonizing the nature of people with the constitutional tendency to accumulation of heat and dampness. And methods of restoration in accumulation of heat and dampness syndrome is, first of all, a restorative diet herbal therapy, acupressure for biologically active points in marmas, and physiotherapy. And diet therapy. Favorable food here is cool, light and dry. We should avoid hot, heavy food, and hot, by hot we meaning not only spicy food, but hot by temperature. Uh, we also have to avoid heavy food, animal fats and oily products and alcohol. You should pay attention to the tastes that increase pita kapha vikriti and avoid intaking them because they increase heat and dampness. So here we can see sweet. Sweet taste consists of soil and water in its nature and it's cool and heavy and sticky. It increases kapha greatly so we, we should avoid it. Also salty taste. It is formed by water and fire. It is heavy, warming and sticky. It increases kapha and pita. Sore. Formed by fire and soil. It is warm, heavy and sticky and it increases pita and kapha again. And the next taste here is pungent. It is formed of fire and air. It is also warm. It is light though and dry. It increases pita so we should avoid it. And the tastes that would be beneficial for us in this state are bitter taste, it is uh, formed by air and ether, it is cooling, light and dry, it mm, decreases pita and kapha, lowers, lowers them, and in stringent taste, it is formed by air and soil, so it is cooling, dry, and it uh, also decreases pita and kapha. Also, split meals are recommended, eat five or six times a day, and uh, it is important that you intake bitter spices when you eat. And also, weekly fasting days are recommended.
One of the most beneficial products for this constitution type are legumes. Most of the legumes are good for kapha's. Dr the uh, drying vayubhuta. I'm sorry, they're drying due to Vayubhuta and also they are good for Pitta due to cooling energy or Sita Virya. And here you can see um, recommendations of Chinese diet therapy. And according to Chinese diet therapy, legumes uh, is the basic part of the nutrition regimen for the person of Pitta Kapha type. In the table you can see the legumes in, in the descending order according to their effectiveness. So first and the most effective here is mash. It is sweet. Uh, in taste it, it has cool energy and it, it is light. It, it removes poison and heat, eliminates heat, removes wa water. We can also use green beans, black beans, vigna, soy, red mash, peas and vichy fava. And the spices. As for spices, it is not that easy to find spices that would be beneficial for, for this constitution type, as most of the spices are pungent or hot. That is why bitter spices with cool or warm energy are recommended. We can use cardamom, peppermint, cumin, fennel, coriander or calentro. Refuse to uh, consume salt as it consists of water and fire in its nature and it brings pita and kapha to a great imbalance. And the first one of the most beneficial plants for this constitution type and as you can see here we use seeds of the plant it is Caryandrum sativum. It is has bitter taste, it is light and as we use green seeds we see that them have Sita Virya or cold energy and it is it lowers all three dosha. If we see uh, if we look at this karma at the karma of this plant we would notice that it has diuretic effect, it stimulates appetite and digestion, it has sudorific effect, antiseptic, carminative and antipuretic. And here is 8 treasures tea to dissolve dampness and expel heat that you can recommend to your patient of Pita Kapha type. If you remember, uh, then we discussed clinical example and we were talking about the woman patient who came to your office and that we would recommend her to drink herbal tea within a month. So this is one of the teas that you can recommend to your patient uh, as a starting therapy. So it consists of bamboo leaves, the roots of licorice, the fruits of uh, gardenia, the buds of honeysuckle, yellow chrysanthemum flowers, mint leaves, the dried bark of watermelon and green tea. So the recipe is quite easy to make. And herbal therapy for the accumulation of heat and dampness syndrome, the general characteristics of medicines lowering pit and kapha are um, the herbs should be cool in ener energy or warm or neutral and the tastes are bitter and astringent and less often sweet. The most important algorithm of this constitution type that you need to remember is that the root of heat is in the liver and the root of dampness is in the spleen. We talked about dampness and its physiological meaning in the previous lecture. Today we are going to discuss the meaning of heat. And the heat can be presented as excess of liver fire, liver fire flaming up in upwards direction, excess of liver and uh, gallbladder fire, full fire in the liver channel, and liver fire. It is a complex of symptoms developing as a, result, as a result of formation of pathological fire in the liver, the rise of liver key up, manifestation through excessive fire and heat at the top, signs of full heat, not on the background of emptiness of yin, which is important. And the medicines expelling, cleansing from the heat. We can divide herbs cleansing from heat into several groups. Herbs that expel heat and fire. They remove the heat from key barrier. What do we mean by key barrier? It is the very organ where uh, stagnation of qi is taking place. So if qi stagnates in the liver, so the liver is the qi barrier. So we select the herbs that would help to expel the heat 
from the very organ that stops key, where key gets stagnated. The next group of herb, the, the herbs that expel heat and dampness, the group of bitters. Uh, these herbs are a bitter, drying, and also used for removing the full inner heat. As a rule, uh, it is herbs having bitter taste and strong drying effect. The next group is uh, herbs expelling heat and cooling the blood. They remove the heat from the blood barrier, which means that they cool the blood. And the herbs expelling heat and poison. And the herbs that remove the heat in infectious intoxication such diseases as uh, furunculosis, abscesses, severe inflammation. And the, the last group is herbs expelling empty heat. They remove the heat in the emptiness of yin. So now it is important to remember uh, or to remind you what all those syndromes are mean. Emptiness of yin, the um, syndrome of full heat, the syndrome of empty heat, and the first goes the constitutional emptiness of yin syndrome. Yin in its nature has moisturizing uh, function. It moisturizes and nourishes the internal organs and tissues, forms the shape, controls the young beginning, <laughs> prevents agni from over inflaming. It controls agni. It supports body fluids. It controls and supports blood and jing substance. What happens in the emptiness of yin? In the emptiness of yin, the control over young beginning is lost and we get a relative excess of heat which manifests as a symptom uh, as a syndrome of empty heat so we get this relative excess of yang on the background just on the background of the lack of yin and the next syndrome is excess of yang so it is actual excess of yang when yin is in norm it is a prevalence uh, of warming function of fire as a result of it, its excess. So there were no excess of yin from the very beginning and uh, there, uh, the, the excess of fire starts developing in the body and we get the excess of yang. Yang warms up organs and tissues, moves and activates, stimulates production and development excess of yang on the background of normal yin uh, is called the syndrome of full or pathogenic heat and the last syndrome important for us here is excess of yang and yin this is the actually state that we have here it is a hot and moist type or hot and dampness heat and dampness Yang again warms up the organs and tissues, motivates, activates, stimulates uh, production and development. And yin in its turn provides dampness, it moisturizes and nourishes internal organs and tissues, forms the shape, controls yang. With the excess of yang and at the same time with excess of yin, we get this syndrome of full pathogenic heat again but we would also get a signs of heat and dampness manifesting in their full so medicines expelling the heat and drying uh, the dampness uh, they have cold energy and bitter taste um, to remove heat they have to be cold and to remove dampness they have to be drying or bitter in this case Bitterness dries the dampness and the cold removes the heat. The syndrome of dampness and heat can occur in the stomach, gallbladder, liver, low bur uh, lower burner, joints. It is always manifested uh, by presence of uh, um, pustules in the skin, burajaka pit, the problem. But here we have to be careful with yin. So if we have uh, yin, in deficiency, the herbs can be of a strong drying effect, so we can injure yin. 
do not use this uh, drying, strong drying herbs uh, in the emptiness of a uh, spleen and stomach. In emptiness of yin, uh, we should use medications that would at the same time nourish yin and they additionally prescribe to balance the action of drying herbs. And in traditional Chinese medicine, we have so-called three yellow friends. These plants have yellow flower, flowers, that is why they are called three yellow friends. And first, here is Cutillaria, or skullcap. It removes heat and dampness, dampness from the upper body. And you remember that in the development of the syndrome, we have this excessive heat, especially in the upper part of the body. So this herb is extremely beneficial for us. The next plant is Coptis or gold thread. It removes dampness and heat from the middle part of the body. And philodendron, uh, it removes heat and dampness from the lower body. And first of the three yellow friends uh, is Cutillaria bicalensis. And as you can see here, we use root of this plant. Its pharmacological properties um, is antipyretic, antibacterial, antiviral, antimycotic, diuretic, sedative. It lowers blood pressure and increases uh, sugar in the blood. It has bitter taste and cold energy. And this is the very properties that we need. It uh, lowers pita and kapha and increases vata. And the next plant here is Coptis chinensis. And as you can see here, we use rhizome of the plant. Its pharmacological properties, um, it removes digestion, uh, improves, I'm sorry, digestion. It has choleratic effect. It treats skin diseases that we need in this case. It removes toxins. It, is, uh, it acts as hepatoprotector. It has bitter taste. Um, According to traditional Chinese medicine, it is the most bitter plant. So uh, it has cold energy and this is the very thing that we need. It expels the heat, drains the dampness and removes fire and yang. And philodendron emirense, pharmacological properties. It is antibacterial, diuretic, it has bitter taste and cold energy. It expels heat, drains dampness, removes fire, expels empty heat. And also I added here Plantago asiatica, though it is not, um, it was not in the company of three yellow friends, but anyway. Um, it is pharmacological action. It is diuretic, expectorant, antidiarrheal, and antibacterial. Its taste is sweet, it has cold energy, it expels heat and phlegm. And uh, bitter tonics and antipyretics are used for this constitution type in Ayurveda. Tikta or bitter taste is uh, the coldest, it is drying, it is emaciating, suppressing and slowing down most of the functions. So it, it, uh, it looks as if tikta or bitter taste has this um, freezing uh, effect. And bitter tonic, and when you hear the word tonic, you're thinking about nourishment, and maybe growing of the mass, something like this. But bitter tonic doesn't provide nutrition. It doesn't contribute to the growth and strengthening of the tissues. Uh, bitter tonics are the best of all in removing ama, uh, in the deep heat that reach the liver in inflammation and intoxication. It has a powerful antibacterial, antiviral, antiparasitic effect. It also regulates liver functioning in conditions of high pitta. It regulates the function of the spleen in violation of carbohydrate metabolism and fat metabolism. Um, those are diabetes and obesity. And uh, it also has anti-tumor property. We can use here aloe, mm, berberry, gentian, coptis, katuka, and neem. And the first plant we mentioned is aloe, and its rasa is bitter, virya is sita, which means that it has cooling energy. It is great in reducing kapha and pitta, uh, but when taken in excess, it, it can increase vata, but in general, it has a moderate effect on this dosha. The next plant is picoriza kuroa, or katuka. 
uh, it's Russia is Tikta, Virya, Sita, Doshaknata. It lowers feet and kapha and it is a classical, uh, it has a classical uh, Rasayana effect for the liver. And Gentiana Lutea is also, also brings uh, cold bitterness that we need. It lowers kapha and lowers pita, increases vata. It is classically used in the disorders of liver and gallbladder. And Gentiana scabra. Pharmacological properties of this plant. It is antipyretic, anti-inflammatory. It stimulates stimulates gastric secretion. It has bitter taste, cold energy, it, it lowers pit and kapha, uh, it removes heat, dries dampness, removes fire from the liver, and we use dry root and dry zone of this plant. Neem uh, is also bitter and cold. Uh, it has this specific effect um, as it good. It, it is good in treating skin diseases and it lowers pit and kapha. The next plant is Berberis vulgaris. Uh, and when using this plant, it is important to remember that root, leaves and bark lower kapha and pitta and neutral for vata. But the fruits of this plant increase kapha greatly due to sweet vipak. So, that is why in this case we use the bark, root and the leaves of this plant to treat this syndrome. And uh, in traditional Chinese medicine um, we would use different herbal comp compositions and here you can see basic herbal composition for this constitution type and as an emperor or king we have roots of gentiana scabra. As high officials, we use roots, roots of scutellaria baculensis and fruits of uh, gardenia. And as assistants, we use uh, Plantaga asiatica uh, and tubers of Alisma orientalis. Those plants expel fire from the liver and gallbladder, remove dampness and heat. They carry the dampness and heat down. They remove pathological factors through the water paths. And also, uh, as assistants, we, we may use uh, roots of angelica. And as a messenger, uh, we can use roots of licorice. Licorice expels heat and softens the pungency. It balances the composition. As you remember, we were talking about licorice before and it is really often used in different herbal compositions to balance or harmonize the, the action of other herbs and to make uh, the whole composition more even. Here you can see uh, an example of traditional Chinese medicine herbal composition and also um, long and xigen one peels um, they contain gentian, that removing malicious beginning from the liver. And you see that this herbal composition in general contains gentiana, bulperium, scutellaria, gardenia, alisma, plantaga, angelica, licorice and other plants. Uh, and this herbal composition dries the dampness, expels the heat, restores the liver. And constitutional reflex therapy for the syndrome of accumulation of heat and dampness. So here you can see the main points that we can use for the reflex therapy in treatment of accumulation of heat and dampness syndrome. And the first point here is uh, Zhi Yang and it is located on the posterior median line. It removes dampness, relief jaundice, such as uh, as well as Wang Gu point. And Wang Gu point is located on the channel of the small intestine. The next point is Dian Shu. It harmonizes the energy of the stomach and intestine, rises up the clear substances and takes down the turbids. It dissolves the dampness, as well as Yang Ling Quan point. And Yang Ling Quan point is located on the channel of uh, gallbladder. And Tai Chong point is located on the channel of the liver. And Ni Ting uh, point is located on the channel of the stomach. And the last two points, um, the, uh, the Tai Chong point moves the liver key. 
energy which we need in this situation of course and nating point it streams uh, I'm sorry it removes the heat and moves key yin ling quan point it is a yin mound spring it is located on the medial side of the lower leg in a depression of the angle formed by the medial condyle of the tibia and the posterior border of the tibia it is a spring point of the spleen channel it belongs to water element and it regulates the spleen and dissolves dampness it opens and moves the water passages it restores the passages of the triple burner and uh, to influence influence this point we can use acupressure and extremely high frequencies Pian Li point or G16 point according to uh, international naming and it is called rearing passageway it is located three tunes above the crease of the wrist of the back of the forearm and the radial side at the radial side I'm sorry it expels pathogenic dampness and heat improves the lungs energy restores the permeability of collaterals the point of correction of the constitutional accumulation of heat and dampness Wei Yang point uh, it is called outside of the crease at the inside it is located on the uh, popliteal line at the medial border of the tendon of the biceps femoris it restores the permeability of water paths and removes water it restores the permeability of the triple burner it is located on the bladder channel and it expels dampness and points removing fire from the, from the liver and uh, the first point is Xing Jian. it is a spring point of the liver and the next one is Tai Chung it is point uh, of the liver channel it is a uh, yawn source and one of the uh, greatest threats for this constitution type is chronic non-calculus cholecystitis what does this is actually mean it is a chronic mm, polyetiological inflammatory disease of the gallbladder combined with motor tonic disorders of dyskinesia of the biliary tract and changes in the physical and chemical composition of bile or dyscholia the gallbladder is a muscular organ with smooth muscles under the influence of hormone of hormone cholecystokinin gallbladder squeezes out bile which is produced 24 7 throughout a person's life bile is a very uh, fairly complex formation that is formed um, in the hepatocyte the hepatocyte secretes um, the bile and bile consists of quite a number of elements including uh, electrolytes and water certain enzymes hormones uh, breakdown products medications that are uh, that are output uh, through the bile and also lecithin cholesterol and the main component of bile bile acids there is such a thing as recirculation of bile acids when they are released to participate in the digestion process and in the process of hydrolysis of fats and 95 percent of bile is absorbed back so that the liver doesn't have to synthesize it again the causes of chronic cholecystitis first of all it may be bacterial infections um, it can be obtained through hematogenous pathway um, through such infections as nasopharynx uh, paranasal sinuses or and um, streptococcus and staphylococcus uh, um, infections and also it can be of a lymphogenic uh, pathway uh, and we can get it from gynecological diseases uh, and also we can get it through um, problems connected with intestine and uh, insufficiency of the Odi sphincter and also uh, parasitic invasion can cause chronic cholecystitis and uh, it can be caused by du duodenobiliary reflux and food allergy and chronic inflammatory diseases of the gastrointestinal tract such as hepatitis and pancreatitis 
Predisposing factors of development of uh, cholecystitis, uh, first of all, stagnation of bile, uh, hypomata or hypotonic dyskinesia, uh, pregnancy, psychoemotional stress situations sometimes can cause this disease, eating disorders, the lack of fiber in the food, reflex influences from the digestive tract, intestinal dysbacteriosis, uh, or metabolic disorders, obesity, diabetes mellitus, or gout. Pathogenesis of chronic cholecystitis. The chronic cholecystitis may start with neurodystrophic changes in the gallbladder wall, neuroendocrine disorders, stagnation of bile and dyscholia, immune inflammatory disorders in the gallbladder wall. And the clinical picture of chronic cholecystitis is pretty uh, trivial. So first of all, we get pain. Of course, the pain is the main sign here, and uh, we would get get painful sensation in the right hypocordium. We would also feel uh, itching of the skin, and sometimes cholecystitis uh, is followed by subfibrile condition. It is when uh, we have this low-grade fever during a long period of time. And also psycho-emotional disorders and cardiology. So, there are several phys physical signs that uh, we can notice in the presence of cholecystitis that would tell us uh, about the presence of the disease. So first of all, the segmental reflex symptoms. Pressure uh, on specific points would cause pain. There is such a symptom called as Aleve symptom. Uh, uh, it means that we would get painful sensation when pressing on McKenzie point. The pressure at point McKenzie doesn't only cause local pain directly under palpating finger, but also the pain going deeper towards the gallbladder, as well as get zones around the point. Get zones are areas of the skin which increase uh, with increased pain sensitivity, and the pain uh, which is caused by diseases of the internal organs. We would also get. Uh, non-segmental symptoms, uh, reflex point and areas located in the right side of the body outside the segments of the innervation of the billiard system. It is Bergman orbital point, right side uh, phrenicus symptom and plantar point on the right foot and symptoms directly association, associ associated with irritation of the gallbladder with deep palpation and touching of the gallbladder. Cardio intervallogram indicators of chronic cholecystitis. On the background of tension in the 11th channel, as a rule, there would be tension in the stomach channel. As well, uh, because bile reflux into the stomach is one of the features of chronic cholecystitis. Also, there would be tension in the triple burner, showing the presence of endocrine influence in the syndrome. And Nidana tap uh, would show tension of pachaka and prajaka pitta. Pachaka pitta is connected with the violation of digestion in the small intestine and as a result a violation of the bile passage. And prajaka pitta will manifest uh, also uh, as a top of an iceberg through inflammatory skin diseases. A very important additional symptom here is again low Vyana Vata revealing a congestive state. The treatment of chronic cholecystitis. It is not that easy to treat chronic cholecystitis and usually the treatment is of a compound and complex character. It includes a therapeutic regimen, a therapeutic nutrition or a therapeutic diet, cutting the pain, antibacterial therapy, detoxication, rational use uh, or reasonable use of choleritic drugs, normalization of automatic nervous system functioning, uh, immune modulating therapy, physiotherapy, treatment with mineral water, sanatoria and health resort treatment. And therapeutic regimen and nutrition. Uh, it is recommended to have this non-strict bed regimen, regimen for five or six days uh, at a state of uh, psycho-emotional comfort and especially in hypertensive dyskinesia. 
In hypotonic dyskinesia, after the elimination of pain, bed rest is not recommended. Also, we have to take care about the reduction of inflammation in the gallbladder and our nutrition or diet recommendation should be directed to this problem and also we should take care about prevention of bile stagnation in the biliary tract. Also, uh, sharp, a sharp exasperation phase can take place uh, within first uh, two days of the therapy what should we do in a sharp exasperation phase? We should drink warm uh, liquids. Uh, it can be weak sweet herbal tea, juices diluted with water, rose hip decoction for vata, warm mineral water, five, six cups a day, and few crackers. And with the improvement, we can add mashed food. Uh, it is allowed in limited amounts. Mucus and uh, pureed soups uh, of oats, rice and buckwheat, cereals, jelly, kissel, uh, it is a sticky jelly drink, and mousse. Uh, then um, we can take low-fat cottage cheese. Uh, we can include it in the diet. Um, low-fat varieties of fish and meat pureed also or mashed and white crackers and food is taken uh, the, the food intake is splitted so we take foods uh, five six times a day and there is a special diet diet number five for gallbladder disorders um, energetically and plastically it is a normal diet so the number of proteins uh, according to this diet is 90 100 grams per day, fat 80, 100 grams, and um, here 50% would be vegetable fat, carbohydrates 400 100 grams, and number of uh, kilocalories and uh, is uh, from 2,000 and uh, a half to 3, 000, almost 3,000. Split meals again, small portions and frequent five six times a day diet uh, should be rich in magnesium uh, sh we should intake buckwheat and wheat bran what is not recommended meat broths animal fats except butter egg yolk spicy seasonings vinegar pepper mustard horseradish fried and stewed dishes pastry and of course alcoholic beverages including beer are contraindicated completely contraindicated in this case the next thing that we do in uh, exasperation phase is cutting the pain in hypertensive forms of dyskinesia um, spasms with water dominating type of constitution intense pain with irritation in violation of the diet we take antispasmodics in hypotonic form of dyskinesia, uh, when pain is monotonous and dull and aching and with, uh, followed with the heaviness in the right hypocordium, uh, we take cholekinetic agents, increase the tone of the gallbladder and promote its evacuation. We uh, can mm, take vegetable oil, sunflower oil, uh, ol 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 olive oil, one or two tablespoons three times a day before meals and also uh, we can apply heat on the right hypochondrium for an hour uh, d within two, uh, t two times a week and uh, six or eight courses but it should be used with caution in gallbladder stones one of the effective methods to cut the pain, especially in the case of jamming of gallstones in the biliary duct, is reflexotherapy and sujok. In the picture you can see the projection of gallbladder in the food. So the main zone of influence should be the zone of gallbladder and adrenals. In 19% of the cases the therapy brings a substantial relief of the pain. And also there is such a thing as urgent acupressure. Uh, we, we may start with Xingjian and Taichung points. It is a specific combination in the pain. If the pain um, comes in spasms and followed with stagnation, but without inflammation. 
In case of inflammation, we can use Yang Ling Kwan and Wang Gu points. In chronic cases and when stones are coming out, we can use Ri Kyue, uh, I'm sorry, Ri Yue and Dan Shu points. Um, for uh, so how we should uh, use Ri Kyu point? We put your you put your fingers on the point and press slightly. Then breathe with the stomach as though trying to leave the fingers and uh, we can also influence the down shoe point uh, we put the fist behind the back and draw the knuckles along the linea paravertebralis trying to affect the most painful spot and it is important that first you influence the left points and then you influence the right points Antibacterial therapy in exasperation phase. We can use golden seal. Uh, you can see that it lowers pit and kapha. Iceland moss also uh, lowers pit and kapha and increases vata. Caliandula officinalis, the same properties. Cutillaria bicaliensis, aloe, berberis, helichrysum, polygonum bistoria, gentiana lutea, hypericum perforatum, and fragaria vesca. Classification of choleretics. Um, choleretics are the medicines that stimulate bile formation and genuine choleretics. Um, Choleratics may be based on bile acids, it can be synthetic drugs, they can be of a plant origin or hydrocaloric uh, col agents, and also there could be medicines that stimulate biliary excretion. They are cholekinetics agents and cholespasmolytic agents. So what can genuine choleratics do? They directly increase the secretion uh, of bile due to the stimulation of a s synthesis in hepatocytes. They stimulate the receptors of the mucous membrane of the small intestine, which increases the formation of bile. They enhance, enhance filtration of water and electrolytes going into bile. They increase the bile flow in the bile ducts, which prevents the ascent of infection and leads to lowering of inflammation and increase the content of collates in the bile, which reduces the possibility of cholesterol precipitation. And the medicines containing bile acids, the medicines that we can use in cholecystitis. Alcohol, uh, uh, I'm sorry, alcohol, collagol, decaline, festal, colenzym, digestal, and mexasa. And you can also hear, uh, you can also see here uh, the actions um, and the recommendations of the intake of the drugs. So alcohol, uh, it contains dry animal bile, also dry extract of, of garlic, nettle extract, absorbent carbon. We should take one, two pills, three, four times a day after meal for two months. Collagol and decalin, they have um, dehydrocholic acid, uh, we should intake it in, in the um, amount of 1-2 pills 3 times a day after meals for 2-4 weeks. Festal, colenzym and digestal, uh, they contain enzymes of the pancreas, bile, um, hemicellulose. We should take them in the uh, or recommend them in the amount of 1-2 pills 3 times a day. And mixaza, it contains bromelain, pancreatin, bile, and we take one pill two times a day after meals for three, four weeks. Here you can see another uh, choleratics of the plant origin. So you can see here flamine or helichrysum, uh, corn silk. Peppermint, colosus, collagol, alimentum, uh, parsley, and polyphytohol. So, and you can see the uh, ways um, or methods or application. So, helichrysum we take as a decoction. 6 12 grams uh, of helichrysum goes for 200 milliliters of water. Corn silk we also take as a decoction, peppermint as an effusion, colossus condensed uh, 
we, we, uh, colossus is uh, condensed water extract of rose heaps and we take it in amount one two tablespoon two three times a day for two th three weeks Cologol contains turmeric wood uh, essential oils olive oil magnesium emodine of frangula Alimentum contains peppermint, terpentine oil, a coarse columbus oil, olive oil, refined sulfur, and so on. And also, parsley we're taking in the form of decoction and extract of calichrysum flowers uh, that is contained in polyphytocol. Uh, and polyphytocol also contains mint leaves, nettle leaves, licorice root, rose hips, and you can also see here method of application and amount of the medicine that we should intake. There is also such a medicine as hydrocholeretics. They increase the amount of bile due to the water component, increase uh, in collodial stability of bile, and uh, also it is mineral water containing sulfite ions and valerian medicines. And also, you can see here cholekinetic agents. Um, they irritate duodenal mucosa, cause secretion of cholecystokinin that tones the gallbladder and relax the odious sphincter. Uh, so, it can be xylate, uh, made of cotton peel, sorbet, hydrogenated glucose, magnesium sulfate, and Carlsbad uh, salt. It can be berberine, alcohol infusion of berberis leaves, decoction of tenacetum, and sunflower oil, olive oil, uh, and hippophia oil. And you can also see the amount of the medicine that we should intake per day. We were talking uh, about traditional use of choleretics. You can see here that there are many or, or at least uh, three types of medicines, right? So, uh, if we want to use choleretics rationally, we should know what type of disease we have so we could use the needed choleretics. So, in hypotonic dyskinesia, uh, we can use tansy, parsley, sorbitol, xylitol, magnesium sulfate, berberine, mineral water. In hypermotor dyskinesia, we use colenzyme, helichrysum, corn silk, peppermint, uh, nitroglycerin. And in chronic inflammatory disorders, we use uh, alcohol, colenzyme, uh, helichrysum, tansy, peppermint, and so on. So you see that uh, and, um, different medicines have different action mechanisms and they are intaken in different cases. Here you can see clinical herbal composition and it contains a coarse calamus root, uh, helichrysum flowers, calendula flowers, um, artemisia absinthium, grassy part, lean seeds and so on. So this is quite a common recipe that is available in the market and widely used for treatment of the disease. As for physiotherapy for the chronic cholecystitis, uh, we can use inductothermy. What this means? Inductothermy is a placing of warmth uh, on the uh, on the zone of disturbance, warmth increases microcirculation. We also can use EHF electric field, microwave therapy, uh, sinus sinusoidal currents, the pulse current of low frequency, ultrasound therapy, electrophoresis, application of paraffin, and balneotherapy. And the next uh, disease which uh, follows this, uh, the people suffering uh, from this syndrome is gallstone disease. It is a metabolic disease of the hepatobiliary system characterized by the formation of gallstones in the gallbladder. The gallstones also get accumulated and formed in the common bile duct and in the hepatic bile ducts. So let's talk about the etiology of a gallstone disorder or gallstone disease, I'm sorry. So first of all, uh, we get inflammation of the biliary tract um, and also it can be caused by metabolic disorder, accumulation of cholesterol, the violation of a balanced diet and stagnation of bile. Pathogenesis of uh, gastro, um, gallstone 
disease. First of all, it may be oversaturation of bile with cholesterol, turbid dampness as we call it, activation of peroxidation or this liver heat, changes in the balance of factors uh, preventing the deposition of cholesterol into sediment, um, mucus formation as a reaction to inflammation and deposition of cholesterol in the mucus lumps, fusion and growth of lumps, uh, the enzyme coli converts uh, bilirubin into an insulin form which together with calcium salts uh, is a component of gallstones, and also lecithinase of uh, microorganisms uh, organisms break down lecithin increasing the lithogenic index of bile. Stages of development of gallstone disease First stage is physiochemical. Uh, you can uh, in this stage the problem is you would see no clinical manifestation, no indicators obtained by X-ray or echogram examination. In duodenal sensing, there are signs of lithogenic bile in the biochemical composition. You would see a lot of cholesterol and little bile acids, less uh, less thin. Um, and uh, also the cholesterol flakes would be detected. On the second stage, it is a latent stage also, physical chemical lithogenic changes of bile, uh, ultra ultrasound or x-ray verification of stones, but still no clinical manifestation. And uh, the third stage is clinical, it would become painful. And cardiointervallogram indicators of gallstone disease. Here we can see tension also in two channels. But this time it is 11th channel again and the 4th channel. You remember that the root of heat is in the liver. We were talking about this axiom. And the root of dampness is in the spleen. So the 4th channel is a channel of spleen and pancreas. Tension in this channel is connected with formation of sand and stones. It is also important to check the Nidana tab. Here Anjaka Pitta would play the main role which starts uh, the processes of uh, the hepatobiliary system. Anjaka Pitta is responsible for them. You would also see certain signs in the state of Samanavata, violation, uh, violation of motor and peristaltic fu function of the gallbladder. And of course, again, um, Low Viana would tell us about the presence of stagnation. And according to Ayurveda, uh, if you know the basics, um, there are three types of stones. In general, uh, we usually associate uh, different doshas with different colors. So, as you know, Vata is usually of dark grayish, blackish, brownish color, Pita type. Uh, Mm, liquids and fluids and secretions would be connected with a greenish color and yellowish and orange and red color and kapha type usually goes with white. So vata type stones are brown or black, pita type stones are yellow, green or red in color and kapha type are white. And of course uh, there are uh, different types of gallstones according to modern medicine. There are th four types of stones and they are cholesterol stones that are formed in the uh, in the m most of the cases. Compound stones uh, which take 20% of all the cases. Calcium bilirubinate stones 60% of the cases and black pigmented stones which, in the, uh, which is the most rare occasion. So if we do not dissolve cholesterol stones, you see uh, cholesterol stones here go first uh, in the table. So if um, the person has cholesterol stones and he doesn't take care of them and do not dissolve them and they turn into compound stones that are much more difficult to dissolve unfortunately. There also may be the case that we remove the stones but do not take care of the root of the disease and the stones may start depositing in the biliary duct and they are called uh, bilirubinate stones in this case. 
So, conditions and indications for medical dissolution of stones. We can start dissolving the stones by medicines if uh, we have cholesterol stones and x-ray is negative. The size of stones is not more than 15 or 20 millimeters. The gallbladder should fully retain its function. The gallbladder should be filled with stones no more, not more than by half. The cystic duct must maintain permeable. The common bile duct must be free of stones. Avoid uh, mm, avoid uh, medicinal dissolution of stones uh, during the intake of oral contraceptives and antacids. And contraindications for medical dissolution of gallstones. So we cannot start dissolving gallstones if we have acute inflammatory diseases of the gallbladder or and bile ducts. Stones larger than 2 centimeters. If we have liver disease, hepatitis, uh, for example, if we have diabetes, peptic or duodenal ulcer, chronic pancreatitis, severe inflammatory disease of, of the large and small intestine, X-ray is positive, and we have this uh, carbonate stones. In case of pre pregnancy, we also cannot start medical dissolution of gallstones, and if the gallbladder is not functioning properly. The mechanism of medical dissolution of gallstones. First of all, we can take medicines on the basis of bile acids such as uh, chenofalc or ursifalc. We should also uh, take care and um, take care of the presence of mixed fat micelles uh, because colloidal properties of bile and cholesterol solubility is carried out by mixed fat micelles. So we should intake bile acids conjugated with glycine and taurine and le uh, lecithin. In case of reduction of the amount of fat micelles, uh, cholesterol gets crystallized and then the matrix of the stone is formed. So the insertion of bile acids leads to Inhibition of cholesterol absorption in the intestine, inhibition of its synthesis in the liver, and dissolution of cholesterol crystals and stones. Uh, so we should take before bedtime three or six capsules, uh, because cholesterol stones grows at grow at night, for three months. Uh, the course lasts for three months. And in several in 70% of the cases, the stones are dissolved in such a therapy. So, we can also use, as we say, said, herbal therapy for gallstone disorder. And there are different directions of thytotherapy. It can be cutting off uh, of hepatic colic attacks, increasing the amount of bile acids, relieving the spasms. It can be hepatoprotective di direction, cholerotic and choly uh, cholelithiatic direction. For cutting off hep uh, hepatic colic attacks, we can use melissa, reganum, mint, uh, docus carrot, oat, uh, docus carrot, it is a wild carrot. Uh, for increasing the amount of bile acids, we can use milk thistle, uh, betula, which is birch, uh, and also we can, uh, for relieving the spasms, we can use belladonna, humulus, uh, car, mantha, chamomilla, fennel, tilia, valeriana. And in the third, uh, in the third uh, column of this table, you can see the medicines that contain the needed components to achieve the wanted result. And clinical herbal therapy, here you can see um, a common recipe. This is a herbal composition which contains hypericum, peppermint leaves, grassy part of polygonum, fennel fruit, rosa canina root, and fragaria leaves. Specifics of herbal therapy in uh, gallstone disease um, Treatment should continue for two th or three years. Herbal compositions alternate every two or three months with, uh, with 10 uh, to 14 days of breaks. In the beginning of treatment, and this is important, there would occur an exasperation uh, phase that would persist for 10 or 12 days. So this is acute state. 
and you would wonder why do we get this acute state when we uh, have started the treatment and this is associated with the removal of small stones and large sand uh, the biliary tract gets irritated and uh, usually um, the going out of the s small stones and large sands stops after six months here you can see fall recipe it is carrot juice one glass before meals decoction of carrot seeds infusion of corn silk infusion of taraxum flowers and taraxum is dandelion as you know beetroot decoction uh, syringa infusion or a lilac infusion, fusion of carrot and celery juice, fusion of uh, 20, uh, oh, I'm sorry, of 250 milliliters of the plant oil with the same amount of lemon juice, and black radish juice with honey. The main principles of treatment of gallstone disease in Ayurveda uh, in acute states uh, we intake you know, purgative that soothes the liver it can be fresh aloe juice uh, with the addition of turmeric and coriander bitter herbs that have choleratic blood purifying and purgative effects such as aloe, berberis, guduchi uh, and also for lithotripsy we use burgenia, katuka, corn silk and eupatorium root. Here you can see Ayurvedic herbal composition for normalization of liver function and uh, it contains bhumi amlaki, two parts, katuka, turmeric, berberis, brahmi, coriander. Take it uh, in amount of one to four grams three times a day before meals. Of course, beside herbal therapy, it is important to use the reflexive therapy uh, in the fight of, with this disease. And uh, we choose Pita Kapha Constitution in the module, and we will get ready to use recipe. We can also use recipe for the apparatus reflexive therapy, physio and EHF therapy, as well as quantum therapy. We can also use auricular therapy module. Again, select the needed disease and get the ready to use recipe from the program. And let's draw some conclusion. In the treatment and prevention for congestion and heat and dampness, use, first of all, diet therapy module, which would help you to compose diet for pita kapha constitution with limitation of animal fats, herbal therapy. What is the most important here is to use cold bitters and drugs based on bile acids or plant choleratics. We also influence biologically active points, uh, Jing, uh, sorry, Xing Jian and Tai Chong. We use acupressure and food massage. We massage area of gallbladder, pancreas and adrenal glands. We also use EHF therapy and quantum physiotherapy, auricular therapy by the associated zones, and Helios module to um, assess the material sensitivity of the person. You can contact us if you have any questions. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.